Over the last 20 years, I've made a lot of repairs to this DeLorean. It's been such a long time that many of those fixes now themselves need fixes. I expect this to be an ongoing thing, so welcome to the first episode of The Refixing. The DeLorean has two horns, a high note and a low note. Neither of them worked. My first thought was something was probably wrong with the horn switch, or maybe in the wiring, or maybe just a fuse. But no, both of the horns were simply dead. I think I replaced these five or six years ago, and you can see how rusty they are already. This probably has something to do with the fact that they are mounted at one of the lowest points at the very front of the car, and that I'll drive in pretty much any weather. I put in two new horns, I installed them backward to try to keep the water out, but that's what I did the first time, so hey, who knows, maybe it'll work this time. Probably not. But the new horns are in, so at least I can beep at people again. I didn't say they were good horns. These pistons don't actually open the doors, that's what the torsion bars are for. These are mostly just to keep them open. Unfortunately, they only seem to last a couple of years before the doors start to sag and I have to replace them. The good news is that they're easy to get and fairly easy to replace. And that's when you find out just how heavy these doors are. I'll prop it open with a 2x4 and try to keep my shoulder under the door just to reduce the chance of anything going wrong and crushing my fingers. These cars are all about the doors and you can see just how much of a difference these new pistons make. The windshield washer stopped working a couple of years ago and I just never got around to fixing it. The pump wasn't working and I was pretty sure the bottle was leaking. To fix it, I would have to get the bottle out of the car and that's kind of a pain. The bottle sits inside this bucket and every rift nut that holds it to the body was either rusted solid or it spun in the fiberglass or both. After dealing with that, I'd have to Tetris the bottle out of the car without getting snagged on any of the hoses or wires. Then I could actually deal with the leak which wound up being an almost invisible hairline crack on the bottom of the bottle that I could only find by filling it with water and watching it seep out. These bottles are hard to come by, so instead of trying to replace it, I tried to fix it using Permatex Plastic Tank Repair Kit. This actually worked really well. I tested it by leaving it filled overnight and it didn't leak at all. The next problem was that the washer pump was bad, but that just screws into the bottle and it's easy to replace with a new one. So now I just had to get it back in the car. This shouldn't be too hard, but in addition to all the stock wiring I have to avoid, I have this extra pump here that I'll get to later, and this thick ground bus I installed a few years back. If everything isn't in exactly the right place, the bottle won't fit. This part alone took me about 45 minutes. Since I had ruined every rivnut trying to take the bucket out, I just ignored them all and reinstalled it with state-of-the-art zip-tie technology. This doesn't seem like it should be very secure, but it's been like that for a few years and it's been fine, so I'm not really worried about it. The bucket is kind of wedged on top of this lip anyway, so it isn't gonna go anywhere. Before I put it in, I also drilled a hole in the bottom of the bucket, actually a few holes. It tends to fill up with water and that tends to kill the pump. Kind of ironic since its job is to pump out water, but it's not that kind of pump and it isn't supposed to be submerged. We'll see how long it lasts. After all that, the washer still didn't work. It turns out that the nozzle was plugged, or the hose to the nozzle. I'm not entirely sure at this point. The way this is set up on the DeLorean is kind of weird because it's a DeLorean. There's only one nozzle and it's mounted to the passenger windshield wiper. As the wiper moves, it sprays the whole windshield, theoretically. It doesn't actually do a very good job of this. So this seemed like a good excuse to update to a more conventional style of nozzle. Ordered some cheap ones online, hooked them up to a Y splitter that I added to the stock hose. To mount them, I had to do some minor surgery to the ribs on the cowl screen. Cowl screen? Yeah, I guess that's what they call it. I usually try not to damage things when I make these kinds of mods, but my screen was already broken, so breaking a few more ribs wasn't a big deal. The nozzle is just wedged tight in between the ribs with no glue or anything else like that. Unfortunately, these particular nozzles were so cheap that all they did was dribble water onto the bottom of the windshield. So I ordered some new, slightly more expensive, but still pretty cheap nozzles, and they actually work. They also do a much better job of spraying the windshield than the original nozzle did. Definitely worth the upgrade. 
A friend of mine had these Mercedes headlight washers lying around, so he helped me install them in the DeLorean. The logic is that this car is so low to the ground that these headlights get pretty dirty pretty quickly. So some washers aren't a bad thing to have. I got a generic washer pump and we fed a hose into the bottle and tapped the original pump wiring so that cleaning the windshield also cleans the headlights. My friend was able to run the hose up to the washers from under the bumper. We did have to drill two small holes into the bumper for the nozzles. So I guess I do sometimes make permanent modifications for upgrades, but I do try to minimize them. These washers are pretty subtle. Few people even realize I have them in the car. Yeah, so those welds that Jeff and I did on the exhaust didn't survive for very long, and I had to go over them again. Seems to be doing okay now, but we'll see how long they hold. I should probably take some welding classes. And that's it for the first episode of the Refixing. Hopefully it'll be a while before the next episode, but that's probably a bit optimistic. Don't forget to push all the buttons to placate the algorithm. Thanks for watching.